Hey everybody, James with Love My Parts My Body Supply. So this video is gonna be about aspiration pneumonia. Uh, it's a really a big problem with Frenchies, other puppies, as, other newborns as well. But, but I, get, I get daily, I get phone calls where people have got problems with the aspiration pneumonia. Um, and if you don't take care of it, then you, know, it's gonna, you can lose puppies over this. Um, so I got to thinking about this. You know, we don't have much problem with this ourselves, uh, and I think I know the reasons why. But I, but I want to talk about how you first off um, you, the things that you can. Well, let's talk about what it is. Let's talk about what the treatment is, and let's talk about what the cure is. Okay. So what is aspiration pneumonia? We're talking about puppies that get milk into their lungs. Um, that can then set up a secondary infection, a bacterial infection in their lungs that then develops into pneumonia. And the problem is, is that uh, newborn puppies do not have a lot of extra resources. I've got a cat running around, he's gonna hop up here in a moment. Have a lot of extra resources, they get in trouble, they can go downhill very, very quickly and you, and you can lose a puppy or puppies very quickly. Um, so the problem is they've got milk in their lungs, develops into pneumonia, what do you do about it? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna talk about some of our products during this process because that's part of the treatment for it. So it's kind of also an, an unabashed um, uh, talking about our products as part of this. Okay, so if you've got aspiration pneumonia, the first thing is that you've got to diagnose it. This is something that's in our puppy care kit. So I recommend that you arm yourself with the necessary tools to be able to look after puppies. And the problem with all this stuff is you never quite know what you're gonna to need till you run into a problem. If you have an easy litter of puppies, you have no problems, then all of these things I'm gonna show you here, you're not gonna use them. Wonderful, that's the, best, that's the best thing. But if you run into problems, you need these things now. And the problem is now is always on a Saturday when the vet's office is closed and you can't go back there till Monday. And they may not even have these products available for you to sell. Something like a stethoscope, you know, it's a not an expensive piece of equipment, but where would you go buy a stethoscope on a Friday night? I, I don't know, I live in Oklahoma City and I, and I don't know where you'd find this because you know, your vet's probably not gonna have it to sell to you and there's not a medical supply place that's gonna be open. So you can see the problem. All right, so here's the first thing. You think you've got a puppy that's got aspiration pneumonia. Well, you simply listen to his lungs. You will hear a crackling noise and that means that probably they've got fluid in their lungs and you've got the beginnings of a potential problem. So the, the, the precursor to this is you see a puppy that's got milk running out of its nose and the next thing you know is you go to your stethoscope and you hear this rattly sound going on. So you see a puppy with milk running out of its nose, what do you do? You need to have one of these. You need to have part of a puppy cake kit. You need to have an aspiration bulb that you can then put in their nose and suck the milk out, put it in their mouth, chuck the milk out and have got a not a puppy here but a cat so you then take your uh, stethoscope and uh, and I just hear a nice purring it sounds wonderful like a little motor but what you'll hear is is you'll hear a, a noise that's it's very kind of bubbly sounding now if you've had a puppy that just aspirated the first thing to do is to try to get rid of the milk take a napkin put it on its nose Maybe this, dog, this cat's not gonna like this, but hold the cat upside down, the dog rather, and pat on its back to get anything out of its lungs and to use the aspiration bulb. So that's the treatment to start off with. But if the, if the, the dog is just aspirated, you are probably gonna hear some fluid. Wait for about 20 minutes before you decide there's actually still fluid in its lungs. Try to get the fluid out, then listen. So then what's the treatment for aspiration pneumonia? Well. If it starts to develop into mucus, a dog that's having a hard time breathing, you need to get uh, antibiotics on that dog right away. And what antibiotics would you use? Clavamox, amoxicillin. Um, you cannot go buy uh, amoxicillin without a prescription. You're not gonna get it. But you can go buy ahead of time uh, fish mox that you can get online and you can get it from Animal Revival without a prescription. And it's basically amoxicillin. So I'm not gonna give you the doses here. I'm gonna rely on you to go Google us. I don't like giving dosages out because it kind of, it infers a certain amount of reliability uh, on me that I don't want any part of. And remember, any time that I'm telling you about this stuff, remember, I'm not a vet. I'm just giving you this information from my own experience. 
Uh, and so the trust word that hopefully is correct, but anything that you hear from anybody, including me, gotta go through that bullshit detector I've talked about before. Believe in what I'm saying, Google it, make sure that what I'm saying you believe is right, because this is, we're talking about the livelihood of your puppies. Okay, so you've got a puppy that's aspirated. We've already done the necessary things to try to get rid of the aspiration. Uh, we've, if we think we have got a puppy that's got aspiration, it's having problems, we've got amoxicillin on board. So now what do you do? Well, the, the next thing is, is that you can start tube feeding. Here's the tube, it's a rather long one, but it comes in our kit. You can tube feed, you haven't, and I've got a whole video on how to tube feed. You tube feed goat's milk, which you can get on our puppy care kit, or you can go buy, you know, at Walmart, probably will sell you um, goat's milk. But the idea behind this is, is that milk aspiration comes from getting milk in the lungs. And if you intubate, and I'm pretending like I'm intubate, I'm putting a tube down, down the puppy and putting the tube down into its stomach, you will not aspirate a puppy. That puppy will no longer have a proper problem with aspiration if you tube feed. So if you've got a puppy that's in trouble, one way is to, to fix it is to tube feed. And the next thing is, is that puppies that are having problems should be, all your puppies should be weighed daily. This is a little digital uh, scale that comes in our puppy care kit. You should weigh your puppies every day. You're looking for a, a gain of half an ounce or more on every puppy after the first day. The first 24 hours, they'll lose a little bit. After that, they need to gain half an ounce every day. It's a good sign that you've got a healthy, happy puppy. So that's another important piece of information is make sure that you've got healthy puppies. And if you're not gaining in weight, then start looking at what the reasons is. And one of the things could be aspiration pneumonia. You can always feed with a bottle. If you've got problems, you can always feed with a bottle. Um, you've got to be careful when you feed with a bottle because you can, again, aspirate a puppy and get milk coming out of nose. So don't overfeed puppies. Take it slow. What I like to do is I put warm milk powdered goat's milk with hot water into here. And then I want to hold it upside down and I want to make sure that it's not dripping milk out. If it's dripping milk out, there's too, you want the puppy to be sucking on this to get the milk out. You don't want this to be free flowing. So if you've got a nipple that's free flowing, you need to get rid of that nipple and get another one. I like to use a zero through three month old human silicone nipple works really well. Comes with our puppy care kit. You can buy this at Walmart uh, and buy a few nipples, especially so you can make sure you don't have any of the free flowing. Um, and I recommend that every time you've used this, that you wash it out thoroughly. Maybe put a little bit of water in there and throw it in the microwave for a few seconds so it just boils a little bit and get the whole thing sanitized. Okay. All right, so so let's talk a little bit about uh, what the, I've got a cat with me here, he wants, she wants to say hi. Um, so I wanna talk a little bit about aspiration pneumonia, I'm kicking the table, I'm sorry, about aspiration pneumonia and why I don't suffer from it, and why maybe other people do suffer from it. So I think that one of the things that, that a lot of people do is they're very worried about their puppies being squished by mum. And so they keep mum away from the puppies, and they just let the puppies nurse every three hours, and they take puppies away, and maybe use a product like my incubator to put puppies in. That's not what we do. So if you think about this, if you've got a puppy that's only getting fed every three or four hours and you introduce it to mum, all the puppies at the same time, well, what's happened? Well, the first thing is mum has been producing milk for these last three or four hours. She's all swelled up. You put puppies on that haven't been fed for a while and they're wondering when the next meal's coming and they just freaking go to town and gorge themselves on it and <laughs> sucking like damn crazy, milk's flowing like crazy, getting milk out of their noses. If they'd been with mum all this time, the first thing is, is her milk production would be kept in check because puppies are not all gonna nurse at the same time. They're gonna to come to mum and nurse when they're ready. They're not gonna to get to the point where they're desperately hungry. They will regulate themselves. And so for that reason, I think that you're not gonna get in a situation where mum has just got a massive milk that's gotta be, is free flowing. It's, it's a more of a gradual production. So I think that's one of the reasons that we don't have this problem very often is because we are leaving our babies with mum 24 seven, right from when they come home from the C-section, they're not uh, kept away from her. And, and so in, in, in lieu of that, our puppy whelping system uh, patented by us, I think is one of the best things we've done. And the idea behind this is that you can leave mum with her babies right from when they come home and babies are either nursing on mum or they're under the pig row where the heat is and they're happy little campers. 
and mum's happy, she's there with the baby, she's not having that separation anxiety. I think that this is separating mums from babies, I don't think is a good idea. Uh, other people are gonna say otherwise on this, but I can tell you, we hardly ever have a problem with milk aspiration. And I think this is some of the key to it. Okay, so now let's say that you do have a problem where you have a mum that really has a lot of milk. And uh, you know she's, she's leaking milk out all, almost, almost all the time. And when you put the puppies on her, you're seeing that milk's free flowing out of their noses. What can you do about this? Well, in the past, what I'd say is, you've got to put up with it or you've got a tube feed. Those are your two choices. But I think I've got another solution and I haven't used this myself, but it's one that I've recommended to some people after a little bit of research. And it is a very simple, it's very simple. It's basically a breast pump. So what this is, is this is a regular syringe, just like, you know, this is a 10 cc syringe. You could use a bigger one for, you know, 13 cc, or you could use a smaller one for small dogs if you've got, you know, little chihuahuas or something. But it's just a simple syringe that I took this syringe, I took a steak knife and I cut the very tip of it, the very end of it off completely. And then I take the syringe and I put the syringe the wrong way around back into the syringe. And now I have a suction pump. And if you put this up against my arm and suck, you will see, let's see if I can give you a good view of this. You can see my skin is being sucked up into the syringe. And if I was lactating out of that point right there, this thing would be filling up with milk. So the idea behind this is if you can take some of the pressure off mum and some of this pressure that's making the milk flow like crazy, you could take that milk and you could put it in a refrigerator and feed it back to your puppies if that's what you want to do. But the point here is, if you've got a mum that's got a lot of milk on board, get rid of some of that milk. And this helps other ways too, if you've got a dog that's got mastitis, a dog that has got a lot of milk, it's not being drunk by the puppies, it happens typically on the, 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 the uh, nipples towards the chest, where they're not getting used as frequently because they're not as big. And you can start to get lumps in those. It kind of feels like kind of ropey ligaments in their breasts that can then turn into mastitis. This is a way to uh, express milk from a mum that's much easier than do it by hand. Take a warm towel, put it on the boob, get it warmed up, massage it a little bit, put this on, suck it, get the milk out of it. So I think that this is also part of that cure for you if you've got this problem where you've got a lot of free-flowing milk, you've got puppies that are got a milk streaming out of their noses, give this a shot. Because I think you're much better off if you can leave babies with mum as opposed to taking babies away. And you've can then got to spend the next three weeks where these puppies are in an incubator and you are tube feeding and you are the mum and the mum's out of the picture. I don't think that's the best place to be. I think it's much better that you can put your babies with mum. Uh, so, to, to wrap this up in a nutshell, we think that you should be using, here's our plug, you should be using our whelping system that puts the babies either on mum or on the outside of, the, of the, 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 the perimeter of the crate or the whelping box you've used under a pig rail where it's nice and warm. It makes the puppy stay in that place. Mum's not being warmed up. She wants to be in it with her babies and that's where she should be. And I think that way you help regulate this whole milk production. If you've got a problem, then the thing to do, I think, is to try to get some of the milk off mum. Get this milk production down where you don't have this peak load of milk that's rushing out like crazy that's flooding your puppies. And if you get into a problem where you've got to take it under your own control, then the thing to do is get a tube to tube feed and basically uh, you know, limit their access of mum to the puppies where they're getting aspirated. Uh, and then finally, we recommend that you're weighing your puppies on a daily basis to make sure puppies are healthy and happy. And if you run into problems, it's time to get some antibiotics on board quickly because a secondary infection in the lungs develops into pneumonia and pneumonia in a puppy can end up with a puppy dying within literally you know, half a day or a day, you can lose puppies over this. So that is it. Um, make comments. Um, I appreciate the fact that you watch my channel. We'd really like you to subscribe to us. If you want to look at some of these products that we offer, then the place to go to is www.mybreedersupply.com. My phone number is there. If you've got problems and you want to talk to somebody, you'll get me at any, don't call me in the middle of the night unless it's an absolute emergency. But if you want to talk to me, I'll be more than happy to talk to you about all of this. And uh, thanks for watching and best of luck with your puppies. Bye everybody.